Hey, it's Maria here, and in today's episode of Goalie Training Pro TV, I am giving you the secret to unlocking your hips. You might be one of those goalies where it kind of takes you forever to warm up and get your hips moving the way you want them to move, or maybe you're one of those goalies who just is on a never-ending quest uh, for more hip mobility. You want to have that Gumby-like flexibility. Well, today I've got a five minute mobility routine for you to do every single day that's gonna unlock your hips. This is Maria from Goalie Training Pro TV. I'm an exercise physiologist who specializes in off ice training for hockey goalies so you can win more games with fewer injuries. And if you stick around to the end, I might just give you a couple of bonus moves. So what do we need to do to unlock your hips? Uh, we need to do a little bit of soft tissue work. Um, we need to do a little bit of mobility work. Makes sense, right? So uh, this is a routine you can do in five minutes or less. You will do it every single day. If you don't do it every single day, you're really not going to see any results. So for the first one, you're going to need some kind of a ball, a lacrosse ball, uh, a tennis ball, a baseball, any kind of ball. You go find that. I'll meet you back here on the turf. So now you have some sort of ball. This is the bivy ball. It vibrates a little bit, which I do think has some impact on sort of the soft tissue release element of it. There is something to the vibration, which is why those Theraguns, you know, feel so good when you use them, but it doesn't matter what ball you have, grab your ball. Um, and we're going to get on the hip flexor. So we're really just doing kind of a general hip flexor release here. So just getting somewhere on the front of your hip joint. And if you kind of lift that leg, you'll feel like a big cable of muscle in there. So that's what we're going to start off just generally targeting that. So we'll put the ball right there. We'll get on there and we're not going to rip around on it. Like we're on a ride at the carnival. We're just going to cut kind of explore that area. If we find some trigger points or some really tender spots, then we're just going to stop and sit on those and, and let it melt in a little bit. And then when that's sort of feeling like, okay, that feels better, we'll keep moving on to the next spot. We're going to do about 30 seconds on each side. Why 30 seconds? Uh, well, because I told you this whole routine was only going to take five minutes. So <laughs> we're going to do 30. And I think 30 seconds is a pretty good number for every day. Could you do 60 seconds? Yes, absolutely. You could. There isn't going to be any harm in it. Is there going to be benefit of that? I don't actually know. So you see for yourself. We got the front side of your hip with that hip flexor release. So now we're going to work on the back side of your hip. So, uh, and we're not going to do kind of the regular glute. So maybe you do your glute anyway, sort of the part that you sit on, you get that, that that's pretty common. Where I want to target is this upper glute. So kind of this upper portion where your glute almost integrates into your upper, uh, to your lower back. So sort of here up to the top of your pelvis. We're not getting on any bony prominences. Anytime you do self myofascial release, foam rolling or using lacrosse ball or anything like that, you don't want to get on a bony prominence. Just stay in the muscle part. And the same with hip flexor, really just kind of exploring around, trying to see if we find any tender points. If we find a tender point, we'll sit there. We could even tack it down and then kind of do a little active movement. So just so more like uh, moving the muscle underneath. And you're going to spend 30 seconds on each side with that as well. From there, you'll get into this 90-90 position. So 90 degree angle here, 90 degree angle here, and a 90 degree angle here. So really, it should be called a 90. 90, 90, but that's maybe a little too wordy. So we just call it, those of us in the know, call it 90, 90 for short. Uh, but we're going to get in this position. We're going to stay tall in our torso. So we'll resist the temptation to be like, oh yeah, want to see how flexible I am? I can lie right down like that. That's how flexible I am. Because that's really back flexibility, not so much hip flexibility. So we're going to try and take our back out of the equation, stay nice and tall. Now, sometimes we, we can use this position for different stretches. What we're going to do today is a little PNF. So 
which stands for proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. There will be a quiz afterwards, so make sure you remember that. But we're going to get in here in this nice stretch position. Then for five seconds, I'm just going to, with like medium pressure, this is different from the FRC stuff we do. So if you're in Shutout Academy or have strategic mobility, this is different, okay? So don't, don't get excited. But we're just going to push with about 40% of our max effort, not super hard push, uh, pushing our whole lower leg down into the floor. So we'll push for five, four, three, two, one seconds. Then we'll see, can I get a little deeper into the stretch? And I'm going to then hold that stretch position for 10 seconds. After I've held for 10 seconds, again, I'm going to push, but not heavy pressure, maybe around 40%, no more. Gently push this whole lower leg. So as if I'm trying to make an indent of my lower leg in the turf, I'm going to push for five, four, three, two, one. And then again, I'll see, can I get a little further forward without rounding my back? Oh, like magic. I can. So then I'm going to hold for 10 more seconds and I'm going to do that three times. So three times a five second gentle push, take up the slack and a 10 second hold. But but wait, there's more. <laughs> we can also do the 90-90 this way. So almost like I'm trying to take my shoulder towards my ankle bone. It's kind of, a, it's a quite an awkward position, but same thing. I'm gonna push my whole lower leg down into the turf, just medium pressure, no more than 40%. So I'm gonna push down one, two, three, four, five. Can I take up any slack? Yeah, a little bit. And I'll hold that for 10 seconds. Then again, I would push down, five, four, three, two, one, relax, and then can I take up more slack and hold. So really keep in mind too, like pushing harder does not get you more benefit. So just again, medium pressure, no more than about 40%. And now we need to stand up. This is gonna be the last move in your five minute mobility. This one is absolutely from FRC, so functional range conditioning. It was pioneered by Dr. Andreo Spina, and it's just a hip cars. So you can hold on to something for balance. Um, here, the ceiling's low enough, I can use the ceiling. But I'm going to bend my knee, and I'm trying to keep my pelvis level. And I'm going to irradiate tension through my whole body. So uh, I'm irradiating tension, like 60-70% 60, tension through my whole body. My abdominals, my standing leg, my arms, everything. And then I'm going to trace as big a circle as I can with my hip without tilting my pelvis. So I can't like come way out to the side and you know do something like that. I've got to stay balanced as I go. And I'm gonna go in each direction. I'm gonna do two in each direction. And as I come around, I'm trying to generate about 80 to 90% of my max force in those hip muscles, in what I call the rotator cuff muscles of your hip, even though there's really no such thing. So and then we'll go both directions and really think about getting as high as you can, out to the side as far as you can, extending back behind you as far as you can, keeping that neutral pelvis position. So not letting your body do the working. That should be fatiguing. If you do it and you're like, oh, that was really easy then you're not generating that intrinsic uh, tension that's really a key to that movement, to getting benefit from that movement. So that is it really. That is your super simple five minute mobility that you should do every day to unlock your hips. And really, even if you do it consistently, within five days, you'll notice a difference. The goalies that follow my advanced programs, like if they're in the shutout academy or they do strategic mobility, they tell me that within like a week or two, they're making saves that, you know, in their opinion, they had no business making whatsoever. Now I'm not saying spending five minutes on these four exercises is going to give you the full splits. I did do a video on how to get a deeper splits. I'll put the link in the description if, if, that, if you're a splits kind of person. So now that I've given you five minutes of mobility, it's time for you to give me one second to hit the like button or, if, or hit the like button and then subscribe if you're new around here. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell and then you find out about the new videos before anybody else. And since you've stuck around this long, I am going to give you two bonus.
guys. Don't tell the people who left early. I'm giving you just you guys two bonus exercises. Your first bonus exercise is just lacrosse ball on the bottom of the foot or any kind of ball on the bottom of the foot and using enough pressure so that it feels almost uncomfortable but not painful and you're gonna spend 30 seconds to a minute on each side and if you're like that's so stupid I don't why do I need to do that then do this if you haven't seen it before start off before you do the lacrosse ball on the bottom of your foot stand feet together knees poker straight see how far down you can do forward bend do your 30 to 60 seconds on each side boom knees together or feet together knees locked do it again and you'll find you usually get like that much more mobility out of it so so it don't even ask me how it works but somehow putting input into the bottom of our foot sends some kind of a stimulus a ner nervous system stimulus that helps kind of release or relax our uh, nervous system governor that really has a lot to do with limiting our range of motion. It's not so much sometimes that our muscles are tight, it's more that our nervous system doesn't really trust us to use all the, all the mobility we have. Like when your parents put one of those speed limiters on the car because the car can go really fast and they don't trust you to drive the speed limit. And the last bonus drill that's a great one, I think for every goalie to do on a daily basis, great when you come back off the ice, is just inline traction. So you'll attach a bungee or a super band around your ankle, just like this. So you'll put your heel in it and then crisscross it over your forefoot. And that kind of locks it in from there. And it has to be attached to something really, really solid. I have this attached to my power rack. And from there, you just scoot back, have a little lie down, and love life. <sighs> and we'll do that for about 60 seconds on each side. So there's a super simple way for you to get started improving your hip mobility. If you're like, no, no, I don't want the super simple way. I want the pro tips how to do it. Uh, then you should probably check out strategic mobility, which is just at strategic mobility for goalies.com uh, because it is sort of the pro style goalie specific mobility program I designed. There are three different phases that you kind of progress through with that. So ch check it out if you're interested. I'll put a link in the description as well. If you aren't quite ready for the pro big leagues or like the pro level program, then you should pro definitely head over to your app store and type in butterfly challenge. Uh, it's a 14 day free flexibility program. It it's like a bit great basic program. Most goalies get a two to four inches wider butterfly flare in just the two weeks and it's free. So you could check that out. Uh, I'm interested to know if you would like me to do a more detailed video on getting deeper in the splits. Not everybody can do the splits, but let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make a video on some ways that you can get deeper into your splits. Uh, and the final thing I'll mention is if you try any of these exercises and you're getting hip pain or discomfort, uh, something that isn't kind of a stretch sensation or a tightness sensation, then I want you to leave that uh, exercise out. It might also be a little warning sign that, hey, maybe, maybe something is limiting your hip from moving that way and maybe it's time to get it looked at by your sport physical therapist. So I'll leave that to your judgment, but nothing in this video should give you discomfort. That's not, it's not like, oh yeah, this is good. I mean, the lacrosse ball might be a little uncomfortable if you're not used to it, but I mean more in the movement drills, if you're getting pain or pinching, just leave that one out. Uh, last thing I'll remind you again, hit the like button, why don't you? Uh, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe, and I will put a link to all those resources I mentioned in the description box below. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Jeez, I almost forgot to tell you. Uh, I have this private group on Facebook. It's called the, Go I don't know why I'm whispering, guys, it's private. <laughs> it's called the Goalie Training Lab, and it's a place I go in and chat with goalies. It's an ama like super supportive group of goalies. There's no chirping or anything like that in there. So it's a place where sometimes I'll test out new exercises. We'll talk about gear. It's not a parent brag thread or a place for you to go and moan about how suck much you suck as a goalie. It's not that's not our group. But <laughs> but if you're interested in goalie training, then head over to Facebook, type in goalie training lab and ask to be uh, added to the group. And uh, as long as you're not a jerk, we'll add you.